A new report from the Coalition for the Homeless. It shows that a record 42,000 kids slept in a New York City shelter just last year. A short time ago, Dominic, he interviewed the head of the group, Mary Brosnahan, and it was an interesting conversation, wasn't it, Dom? Richard, always dealing with the homeless is a pressing issue, where in many regards, Richard, the problem is actually getting worse. Mary Brosnahan, a startling headline, even for me, a seasoned journalist that's been in the broadcast journalism game for 30 years. Is it accurate that a record high 42,000 children, kids, slept in a city homeless shelter last year? It is. Uh, it's absolutely shocking. So you think 42, 43,000 boy, different boys and girls went through the municipal shelter system last year. So obviously on any given night we're talking 25,000 kids. And you know, here at the coalition's offices. On any given night, 25,000? 20, 20, 25, um, and or so in shelters. are sleeping tonight in New York City shelters. So you think 25,000 boys and girls. And the other reason why we took another cut at this to say, you know, that the one in 73 families or one in 46 kids, you start realizing, I do, as I'm moving around the city, I'm probably walking by some of these kids. You know, they're, they're not sitting there holding a cup or begging they're just trying to get to school and get back so it is shocking especially when you consider the toll that it's taking on those young lives so this dire housing crisis is hitting children the hardest and, and the african-american community well children and black and latino children in particular so you know again i guess our perception is our reality so as you walk around or take the subways you know you see increased numbers of men and women who are marginalized single adults. But what we don't see is that two-thirds of the people sleeping tonight in New York City shelters are families with kids. What happens to those families? Well, in a, in a real sense, and I, we have both an after-school program at, at shelters, and then we have a great sleepaway camp up in Bear Mountain. So we have 300 kids come a different, you know, they each get three weeks up there. And you see when they step off the bus, you know, they're so beaten down that you can see that they've lost hope. They've fallen so far behind in school, they've lost hope that they're ever going to catch up with their classmates. And, you know, we serve them lunch when they arrive, and you see a lot of kids stuffing food in their pockets because they're not sure, just from their experience, they're not confident that there's going to be another meal. So a lot of the process at camp is assuring them, yes, there'll be as much food as you want, um, and you can be kids here. You can laugh, you can play, and we're going to help you catch up uh, to grade level with your studies. And so when they leave, they're crying when they step off the bus, they're crying when they get back on, but for a different reason because they don't want to leave. So it's a very long-winded way of saying that it's robbing these kids of their childhood and any hope of, you know, academically um, achieving what they should. Income inequality low wages and lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Are they the clear drivers, if you will, of homelessness? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, just what you articulated, we're used to hearing about people on the street who may have mental illness or co-occurring substance abuse or alcohol problems. These moms and kids are almost universally homeless because they can't afford housing. So they've made do, they've doubled, they've tripled up, and then when those arrangements fall through, they have no place else to turn. De Blasio, Mayor De Blasio, are his policies a step in the right direction? Well, without a doubt. I mean, we, we had two decades. First, Giuliani, who had a complete criminalization approach to homelessness and tried to get rid of the right to shelter that the coalition established. And then you had Bloomberg, who initially seemed to understand that we needed to have more NYCHA and more Section 8, but then completely backed off any housing-based solutions. And that's, you know, if you were to look at the charts, those last years of the Bloomberg administration, when he withdrew any housing resources for homeless families, if families don't have any way to exit the shelter system, the numbers will just skyrocket. So. Why does it seem, Mary Brosnahan, that we're seeing more homeless people these days on the city subway system? Well, this is a, a very critical moment. We talked about the mayor, but the governor has a role here. As you recall, 
um, with deinstitutionalization, and so all the money that was saved by closing down those psychiatric hospitals was never transferred into community-based housing with support services. And so we're at the end of what the third New York New York agreement. Uh, it's a form of supportive housing, and so. You know, we really are trying to push Governor Cuomo to step up and have 3,500 units um, per year, you know, statewide. So that would that would equal over a 10-year time, 35,000 units of supportive housing. It's much more cost-effective than the shelter, prison, hospital, uh, you know, treadmill that most of these folks are on. Mother's Day is right around the corner, right. and. Is it accurate that some women literally go from the delivery unit at a hospital to a homeless shelter? Over the past year alone, 1,800 babies, newborns, were brought from the hospital home to a shelter. And, you know, as a mom myself, just imagining, you know, just the despair uh, that woman faces, uh, let alone just the logistical nightmare of trying to feed, a, you know, comfort her baby um, when you're just living day to day. Did I accurately hear you say 1,800 women, yes. literally, when they deliver their babies, go from the hospital to that, that night or day to a homeless shelter? Right. And, you know, I'll say that not all shelters are horrible places. You have the ones that are run by nonprofits, the Tier 2s. But sadly, that's the minority. Mary Brosnahan, why do you do what you do? You know, Dominic, I, I, I think I was drawn to this issue because it's so solvable. Um, you know, going back to the sort of biblical guidance, you know, Jesus said the poor will always be with us. But that doesn't mean that they should be left to freeze to death on the street. And I am inspired on a daily basis by homeless New Yorkers walking into our front door here for our crisis services, the women that are downstairs right now getting training to, to get jobs, the kids. I mean, you meet these, I have a, a young son myself, you meet these kids and there's so much potential there and they'll just steal your heart. You know, you go up to camp. When I get down on this work or get depressed, I just go up to camp and sit on the dock and the kid comes up and sits down next to you and puts their arm around you. You know, that's what it's all about. Those kids have the same dreams that your children and my child have. And so, besides working with the greatest staff in the world, that's why I do what I do. You know, Dom, one of the things that stood out is I'm just envisioning a mother going directly from the maternity ward, and you said, what, 1,800? Yes. And, and going directly to a homeless yes. shelter. Yes. One, uh, a lot of credit has to go to Mary Brosnahan for what she does in terms of helping the homeless. But think about this, Richard. You're a brand new mother. You literally just delivered your baby. Just delivered your baby. And the start for that child is to go directly from that hospital to a homeless shelter. It's just, it's just heartbreaking, and it shouldn't be this way. No, it's got to be a better way. All right, thank you, Dominic. Coming up next, 150 years after his death, Abraham Lincoln still has a huge hold on the American people. We'll explore why he still resonates so much after all these years.